Okay, welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to talk about the very final steps of attaching the tie base to the um, ceramic. So let's dig into it. Attaching the tie base is not difficult. Um, like almost every single restoration that is cemented or bonded, we want to make sure that we're doing several things. First step is to always double bleed the cement. Um, and we know that we've already prepared the ceramic and the tie base in a previous lecture. Um, so always double bleed the cement. Um, we're going to apply that cement not only to the tie base but also to the ceramic. So tie base and ceramic. Then we're going to hold it together right here for just a few seconds. Allow seven minutes for it to cure and then remove the excess. So what cement are we talking about? This is a very specific, unique cement called Multilink Hybrid Abutment Cement. And this is an Ivoclar product, which was designed to work specifically for tie bases and implant restorations. It is only self-curing. Comes in several different opacities. The one that we have listed here is the MO0, Medium Opacity Zero. The most opaque, and the one that I'd recommend that you buy, is HO zero ho zero get that one the high opacity zero it's the it's the most white color you've ever seen if you think this is white the ho zero is just super bright white so follow these steps you want to make sure that you don't get any cement down in that screw access channel down in that area otherwise you're up a creek so apply it to the edge of the tie base around the edge Apply a little bit up inside, you can scrub it with a micro brush, and then put them together. Once the cement is set, um, again it takes seven to nine minutes for it to set, we want to make sure that everything is perfect. Okay? So we're going to polish the interface. This is that same Meisinger blue or gray wheel um, that I used to polish the uh, Emacs. I'm going to use it to polish the interface. Now if I go ahead and blend that titanium down against the Emacs, that's totally fine. But be very cautious that you do not beat up the area that interfaces with the implant. Because we need that to be perfect. All right? We want it to be absolutely perfect here where the implant interface uh, interfaces with the tie base. All right, final inspection. Everything should be perfectly highly polished. No excess cement, zero excess cement. Make sure the screw is clean, not only down um, in the threading, but also in the um, opening. And then the final question you should ask yourself is, do you want this in your mouth? Now, this case here, you can see a little gray show through. See, I've got thin ceramic. Um, so the HO0 would have done a much better job at blocking this out instead of the MO0. Um, this, there's a little shadowing there too. So, but this case turned out really, really nice. Um, but the question is, always ask yourself this and have your assistants, if they're bonding in crowns, if they're licensed and trained um, and certified, ask them, would you want this crown in your mouth? Are you comfortable with this in your mouth? And if the answer is yes, then great. That's assuming you have a relatively good standard of quality, right? Okay. So, I mentioned before about the excess cement, right? Um, cement necrosis is a serious problem. So make sure that when you've cemented, connected things, that everything is clean and perfect. Um, make sure that there is no excess cement. That is super critical and that you would be comfortable having this restoration in your mouth. All right. And one other thing that I don't know if I mentioned, if you do have a two-piece, like this is a two-piece, make sure not only polish where the ceramic meets the tie base, but where the ceramics come together. Put them together and use that gray wheel and blend those areas together so it's a perfect fit. That's one of the benefits about doing an indirect restoration is you can control those margins perfectly. I mean, absolutely perfectly. Okay, so the adjustment process, most of you have probably been through this once or twice before with a lab-made implant restoration. 
You always want to make sure things are oriented correctly. You know, these interfaces are really unique. They fit very specifically. Of course, this is a Typodont, but make sure that that's interfaced appropriately. Um, the first thing that's going to be holding you up, of course, is the interface. The second thing is the contacts. So if your contacts are too tight, if you're 100% if you're sure your interface is good, then check your contacts. Um, if your contacts are not holding you up, then it might be tissue. A lot of times with an implant restoration, if we've designed it ourselves, you'll get some tissue pressure on the abutment. So pay close attention to that because that could be holding your restoration up, keeping it from cementing all the way. Once you've nailed all these three down, tighten the screw to light finger pressure. L-I-T-E, light finger pressure. Then take an x-ray. Make sure that the pieces are, are uh, connected appropriately, right? Once you're 100% sure, 100% sure that they're connected appropriately, then do your torque check. Use your torque wrench, torque it appropriately, whether it's 35 or 20 or 15 newton centimeters of torque. Then wait a few minutes. Give it a few minutes. Let that titanium and that stainless steel screw settle into each other. Then double check the torque. Every single time I've done this, I have found um, that I'll get a few more little newton centimeters of torque in there. Um, to match up. So it's like the screw settles into the titanium a little bit and loosens and then I can get the screw to go around an eighth or a quarter of a turn to bring it back up to that 35 newton centimeters of torque or whatever it is you're using. So double check the torque, but you have to wait. You can't do it immediately. Wait. Let the two metals work against each other for a little bit and then double check that torque. I would recommend that you always do this. Double check the torque every time you do an implant restoration. All right. So here's that case from before. Like I mentioned, we want to, when we're trying it in, um, place the restoration, do the adjustments as needed. If it's not perfect, send it back. If you can adjust it and make it work and still be within the standard of care, make it work. If you can't, send it back. Um, do it again. And we want to we want to insert something in the patient's mouth that's going to be a good long-term solution that's done well above the standard of care and that provides an aesthetic and functional solution for the patient. All right. Here's a couple of uh, images for you to consider. Um, this is an Astra implant. Um, you can see from the x-ray that's obviously not seated. See these little gaps there? And of course it looks like it might be a contact holding it up. Um, actually, this one is actually tissue impingement. You'll notice the free end saddle that we talked about earlier in one of the lectures that we're supposed to avoid. I didn't place this implant, I was just restoring it. So we want to try to avoid this free end saddle, but in order to get her an aesthetic result, that was the only way I could do it. So it was actually tissue pressure here that was keeping it from seating all the way. This would have gone to place if there wasn't too much tissue pressure. So that was tissue impingement here. Now here is the same uh, restoration seated all the way. Now I know it looks like this is open here, but it's actually not. There was a nice snap contact there, um, but I had to actually literally go in and drill some of that tissue off. I took a high speed with a diamond burr and just scored the tissue off. Um, but yeah, it turned out really, really nice. So, we talked about torquing, torque to the appropriate manufacturer recommendations. Always double check the torque. Um, and what I like to do is put a little bit of uh, Teflon tape. I'll irrigate it with a little chlorhexidine, dry it out as much as I can, put a little Teflon tape right over the screw head, maybe three millimeters of Teflon tape, um, pack it down real tight. And then if I've already etched the internal area of the abutment, um, or the screw retained crown, it's already ready for the adhesive. If I've used the monobond etch and prime, or if i have used the silane after using the yellow or red etch, um, then it's ready for a composite. So we'll dry it out really, really well. If you feel like you've had some moisture contamination, use a little isopropyl alcohol, dry it out again, and then apply your composite, either in layers or in bulk, curing indirectly. Um, but the critical thing is, check the torque and check it twice, five minutes apart. All right. So, here's a couple of cases for you to consider, a couple of things for you to look at. Um, I don't think I included all of these 
uh, or any of these, for, yeah, I did a couple of them in the presentation series. Um, in the end, like I said before, you want to make sure that you're doing what's right for the patient, right? These restorations um, are a service to the patient. The goal is to provide them with a functional aesthetic long-term outcome so that they don't have to worry. Um, give them the peace of mind of knowing that you've done it perfectly, you've done it right, you follow the standard of care, and everything is up to par. Um, and then just make sure that uh, you follow up with them and give them a realistic ex expectation from the standpoint of how long these will last, which ideally should be indefinitely, and what kind of upkeep they'll need. Um, good brushing, flossing, six month or three month checkups, whatever you're recommending for them. And then uh, give them some warnings, tell them what to avoid, and tell them how they can best serve their restorations, excuse me, that are serving them. All right, so you should now be able to correctly identify all the key elements of implant abutments and crowns um, that uh, we use when we're doing CEREC. Um, explain the elements of the monolithic, the screw retained, and the two-piece cement retained restoration planning and case completion. And you should be able to achieve aesthetic and efficacious implant abutments and crowns utilizing the CEREC CAD CAM acquisition and milling technology. That's the goal, right? Feel free to go back, review these lectures, enjoy them, take notes. If uh, you find anything that you have questions about, feel free to contact, contact me directly. Um, it's not really rocket science, um, but it is pretty technique sensitive. And the next step is, where are you going to take this? Um, you know, what is your end result? And, and realizing, as I said before, not every patient is on the same pathway. Not every patient will require the same course of action. Um, but for me, in my practice, CEREC tie-based restorations are almost exclusively, I could say maybe one or two, maybe one out of a hundred will go to the lab. But almost every single one of them I'll do in-house, in-office, because I feel like I can control the restoration, I can design it the way I want to, I can revise it if I need to, um, and in the end I feel like if that's the case, we have a better outcome for the patient. Again, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Stay tuned for further lectures.